Now we move to number two, or B, adjective clauses. Like the noun clauses, adjective clauses are dependent clauses. We have seen this in a chart earlier, that both of them are subordinating or dependent clauses. But in matter of function, here lies the difference. Noun clauses functions as nouns do, but adjective clauses function as adjectives in sentences do. They play the same role played by adjectives. They are initiated by relative pronouns and relative adverbs. Relative pronouns are mentioned below here in this chart. A subject, who, which, that. A subject, who, whom, which, and that. And to express possession, possessive here, whose, for both. Whose can be for who or whom, and for which. So, adjective clauses either describe or define or give information. This is the function of adjective clauses. Because broadly speaking, we say they modify, okay, or they refer to, or they develop, or they, but to be precise, we've got to say they either describe or define or give information. We, will, we need this afterwards for more clarification. About what? About a noun, a pronoun, or a noun phrase in the main clause. They won't be part of the main clause. They will be set apart with the main, with the main clause in, a, in the same complex sentence, but they modify one word or one pronoun or one noun phrase in the sentence. So in a nutshell, we use them to, for, uh, to move from general to particular or to specific. Because we have the general meaning in the main clause. But if we need to move from general to particular, we need to refer to the dependent clause to define or to describe or to give extra information. So this is why or the reason why we refer to adjective clauses. Relative pronouns are these, okay? Subject and uh, object and possessive, okay, pronouns. Relative adverbs are three. When, where, and why. Their meaning, when, in which or on which. In which time or on which time? Where, in which place or at which place? Okay, even though if it is mentioned that it is time or it is place or reason, for example, why? But we need, as we said earlier, to move from general to particular or to specific. So we refer to adjectives or adjective clauses. So, when for time, where for place, why for reason. Okay, we are gonna to illustrate those rules with the, the following examples. We have four situations. First one, relative pronouns substituting nouns, pronouns, or noun phrases acting as subject. Do not bother with the main clause. 
you look at the second sentence, which is supposed to change to the adject to the adjective clause, okay, in order to describe or give extra information. I like the teacher. Simple sentence. The teacher was nice to me. Ah, if we want to combine, if we want to qualify or describe the teacher, we can join both sentences in one to form a complex sentence. I like the teacher. Any teacher? This is the general. No. I like the teacher who was nice to me. So we moved from general to particular. I like a particular teacher, the one who was nice to me. So this is an adjective clause modifying the word teacher. Another example, and here the teacher is a subject. So it is replaced by who. Another example, he will be moving to Algiers. Algiers is the political economic capital of Algeria. I'll be moving to Algiers. Okay? Algiers is the political. For us, it is known that it is the capital. For someone, it may be known as just count a town but not in particular. Look at this. He will be moving to Algiers, which is the political economic capital of Algeria. Here, Algiers is modified or described Okay, by which is the political, economic, economic capital of Algeria. So this is an adjective clause expressing, sorry, modifying Algiers. The baby hates the babysitter. The babysitter shouted at it. The baby hates the babysitter, not all of them. Ah, just the one that or who shouted at it. Following relative pronouns, substituting nouns, pronouns, or noun phrases acting as objects here. I like the gift my brother offered me, or offered me the gift. So the gift here is acting as, or functioning as an object. So I like the gift that or which my brother offered me. So we replaced it or substituted it by which or that. Last but one, third, possessive adjective clause or relati relative clause showing possession or belonging. Okay, here we use whose. The students are glad to participate. Second sentence, the, sen the students' names are on the list. The students, not any student, not general. We've got to move to specific or particular. The students whose names are on the list are glad to participate. So here, just those who are or whose names are figured on the list. Last one, relative clauses introduced by relative adverbs, when, where, and why, to identify time, place, and reason. Here, it's the first one, 
it was the time when we visited the area. It was the time. Any time? No. The time when we visited the area. So we specify. Second, that is the, the, the area. Area is a place, but in general, it is not uh, specified. We specify it by adding a relative clause initiated by an adverb pronoun where. So where the war was fought. So where the place where the war was fought is an adjective clause modifying area. Last one, what? That's the reason. Any reason? No. The reason why I asked you to come on time. This particular or specific reason is modifying the reason in the main clause. This leads us to restrictive and non-restrictive clauses, and this is the main part of this lecture. Restrictive, in some documents, you find, instead of restrictive, defining, okay, or identifying, or essential. So, restrictive versus non-restrictive, or essential versus non essential adjective close restrictive or essential to what to the meaning of course as stated above the adjective close either identify or give information about the modified the word modified in the main clause thus they can be essential or non essential to the meaning the information we add we modify with may be essential important to the meaning or maybe just an extra information that we can omit, we can get rid of. Let's consider the following examples. A, my brother who or that lives in Algiers visited us last month. Look at B. Do not pay attention momentarily to the meaning. My brother, who, not that, lives in Algiers, visited us last month. Both examples are the same. What is the difference is the, na, the, the adjective clause in example B is set off by commas. Ah, what about the meaning? Look at the first one. My brother who lives in Algiers visited us last month. Do we have one brother or more? Is it clear here? We don't know. So here, my brother, I might, may, be, may have just one or more than one brothers. So in the first one, I have many brothers. But the one I am speaking about is the one who lives in Algiers. So who lives in Algiers or that lives in Algiers is a restrictive clause. It is an essential clause. But in the second, my brother, I have only one brother. So no need to mention who lives in Algiers. We can get rid of it. We can omit because it is not very essential to the meaning. Here we can put it between two commas, okay? Pay attention to this here, 
we kept the same example, but here I said who or that, but here just who, not that. We use that, we replace who by or with that in case the Clause is a restrictive one, is essential. And from this, we can deduce this rule. That is used instead of who or which when the adjective clause is essential. That's why that is never preceded by a comma when it comes to adjective clauses. Just a moment, I can say, well, it's paragraph. Okay, so back to restrictive and non restrictive clauses. We have got two. If the clause is essential to the meaning, we cannot omit it is a restrictive or identifying or essential clause. We do not put commas, okay? So my brother who lives in Algiers visited us last month, okay? Because it is necessary. I have many brothers and I have got to precise the one who lives in Algiers that visited us last month, not anyone. So it is restrictive, we do not put commas. In example B, my brother who lives in Algiers visited us last month. If I have only one brother, it is not necessary to say who lives in Algiers or who lives in Paris or Washington or Mecca, or, okay? It is a non-essential clause. It is just an extra information. We are free to add, okay? But grammatically speaking, we've got to differentiate it from the previous one. We've got to set it off by commas, and we leave it, okay? Remember, the subordinators must be placed beside the word modified. This is as a rule that to be considered. Subordinators that initiate Adjective clauses must be closed, must be beside the word they modify, okay? Or the word that we are adding information about. My brother, who? So who, the subordinator, must be closed and beside the, the word modified in the main clause. Here, also, my brother, who? If we refer back to the other examples, we will find the same. I like the teacher who, teacher modified, who initiating, okay, the subordinator initiating the adjective clause. Next, always. You have to be close to each other. Okay? So the remaining is reducing noun clauses and adjective clauses. This is going to be left apart till we finish with the, the third part, which is adverb clauses or adverbial clauses, okay? Well, this is for today. Next time, inshallah, we will deal with part C, adverb clauses.
Before I leave you, I hope that you are taking all necessary measures to protect yourself and those loved ones.